Coast Guard, I lost an engine. I remember the ask Pat across radio, have you ever crossed the bar? Nope. One of the most dangerous strips of water in the world, the Columbia River Bar. Because of the many shipwrecks that have occurred here, this area has been known since the 1800s as the Graveyard of the Pacific. We're on our way to spend two weeks on a yacht with Patty Mayo. We're going to document this extraordinary voyage from Seattle to Los Angeles. He was building a prison, uh, you know, for one of his businesses and stuff, and uh, things didn't go right. And he just ended up shutting everybody off and just selling his house, uh, going to buy this big ass yacht, and now he's been living on, on the water. Oh, look at this lion! Get the f out of my helm right now. We can be off before the cop comes around. That's, that's a way to start the morning out. What's the next big thing? Like, where can we push this? Uh, what just happened? A day to remember. Are you going to do it? I don't think so. Okay. Why, eight people in the city. You know, they've never been punched in the face. No. I don't think it's crazy to cross the Columbia Bar. Some people might think it's crazy. Everything is crazy, Sal. Driving a car is crazy. Jumping out of a plane is crazy. Eating foreign food is crazy. What is crazy? Isn't this the best new song? You guys heard it? It's a good song. for this YouTube show called Southland Bounty Hunters. And he just decided, you know what? I'm gonna start bounty hunting people and put it on YouTube and see what happens. And it just blew up. Well, it's just a bunch of adults fighting with real tasers and tear gas and rubber bullets. And, you know, they're really throwing stuff at me. I'm really throwing stuff at them. We're really fighting. So uh, it's like WWE meets cops. For, for Google, here's the thing. Google's like based out here, and the GPS is awful. And nobody wants to let me in because I drive a, a light. Hummer. A sharp light. There's no light! I'm on the highway! Yeah, after doing the bounty hunting show for a while, I wanted to expand the content I was doing, so I had this idea to create an 8,000 square foot prison called Top Con. Viewers would vote who in the prison they thought was the top con. And if you held top con for 15 consecutive days, you won the prize money in the kitty. And then of course, the fire marshal came in and made up a bunch of laws that didn't actually exist, really pissed me off, ruffled my feathers, and I just took off to Belize and ordered the prison demolished because, well, I don't need her or her town or her bull. I was waiting for the spot, but who's yelling? What's small? Very small. What? My You're brave. Have you ever been punched in the f***ing face? When my dad was alive, I had a thriving business, and when he died, it changed my entire life. I sold my business, went to Miami, rented Lamborghinis, spent all my money on booze and alcohol. I had a $1,500 a night alcohol tab for God knows how long. Blew all my money. Had no money left. Go get f***ed. Then come catch hands, my guy. You want to catch hands? and you want to act like you want to fight, come catch f***ing hands. But don't sit there like a bitch and act like you're f***ing a tough guy. If you want to call someone out, call someone out and catch hands, my guy. I came to my, down to my last $2,500. Couldn't pay my rent, because then I wouldn't have any money for food. And so I decided to uh, close out my apartment, pack everything up that I could, sell all the rest, 
drove it cross country and stayed in my friend's apartment while I tried to make YouTube work for three months. That's the problem with people. That's why I hate people in the city. You know, they've never been punched in the face. So they think they can just go around acting like little suckers, just calling people names and doing stuff. Just being a little bag, you know? Where I come from, if you're a bag, you get punched in the face. You treat people with respect. There's, I think there's a couple different times in your life when you realize that you need to make a change. One was when my dad died. I was just like, man, I can't like I was winning, winning. Like I went, I went. It's up. This is what life is, right? Life is up and down and up and down. But I feel like my life is bipolar. It's really up and it's really down and really up. You just keep moving, Sal. What are we all doing here? Now let's park right here and we're good to go. You guys ready to go to Target? Yep. So we're leaving Lake Union. So that's the water you see coming through. That's why they call the locks. We get locked in, they'll lower us, and then they'll release us to the sound, which goes from fresh to salt. So it keeps the waters from mixing. And uh, right now, it looks like we're going pretty low today. See how it bends? That's because if I push this one, my bow goes forward and my stern goes that way. My bow goes that way, my stern goes that way. So that's how we can kind of control the ass of the boat. All good. All right. I appreciate the crew, because this morning, the first two things I was offered was an egg sandwich and a <laughs> Thanks to gangsters. We already kind of knew a little bit about Patty, and all I had to do was convince my other guy, Sal, of one of my new recruits from Italy. I'm expecting stuff to get wilder. I mean, I heard that at some point we're going to see his <laughs> I, I expect that to happen. I don't know if you guys remember, but I, I broke into Logan's house. And uh, Patty Mayo tased me right between my butthole and my balls. God! What's your name? I would love to get some footage that I'm like, this is the craziest f***ing shit I ever shot and so f***ing fun. Every day is an adventure with him, even if it's just on the boat. I don't know if he's going to fly the drone into the water, if he's going to break a crane, if he's going to be repelling off the side of the boat. I mean, at this point, anything is possible with him. And I think that's what I find most enduring about him is that he just loves life and he loves living it. And I'm the same way. Man, it's beautiful out here, though, isn't it? I feel like I've always kind of been Pat's uh, well, a yen to the yang, kind of. Um, you know, through the years, every time he has an idea, it's kind of me tagging along to make sure he doesn't die. Yeah, I, I feel like that's kind of my role on the boat thus far, is just kind of keep Pat from killing himself, accidentally or intentionally. Either way. You cold? Yeah, that's why I got my jacket. I started shaking like a dog's razor blades, dude. We're good? Yeah. Um, Pat was going to put the tender away by himself and uh, did not bring the keys to the tender before he released the, uh, the stern line. I was on the bow with Justin, and then I hear Patty hollering, babe, grab the hook. And I'm thinking, grab the what? I got a shoelace. I've attached the keys to the drone. We're going to fly the keys Patty, and he's gonna have to reach them. That doesn't look good. Did he? Did he turn it off? Great job. Your drone tried to attack me. How did you? Yeah. How did you get the drone out of the sky? I had to grab it. I had no choice. It wouldn't. I couldn't get. Uh, you, you tied it, you could have tied it like a nice little slip knot or something. Did the drone make it? Yeah. OK. No, that's my keychain holder now. That was funny when, like, I don't know what Were you making it do that? No. Oh, no, it was just going nuts? You. Yeah. This is fighting? Yeah. 
We can see it like jerking away from you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Did you put the? That's why I don't. That I don't want you guys talking to the camera. I'm just gonna cut it. Unless you want to keep it. I don't want that. That's that's the same as a vlog. If I'm talking to the camera or you guys are getting asked a question, I don't want that garbage. Yeah. It's all garbage. I just turned the heat system heat on. That's why. I'm oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got some information to share with you. Me? Yeah. About? Yeah. So at some point there was a little concern from Pat about our ability to cover everything that he wanted. Uh, that was a little disappointing and uh, we felt a little frustrated about it because we're here for him and we wanted to cover everything that he wants and make it exactly how he wants. I'm fucking whatever. Like I, I guess in the past it's just like whatever, I just kind of let it roll over but I'm a, being a little bit more vocal about it because I'm just so sick of hiring director, producer, crew that doesn't actually do what needs to be done. At this point, I'm just like, fuck it. I mean, if I don't want, if I have to go through another fucking crew to get a show, then I'll just fucking go stay at Logan's house for a week. I don't think that fucking board should, that monitor should get filled up with green fucking notes. After the production team had missed a couple events, he said, I'm gonna start adding sticky notes to the monitor so that way I can keep up with how many events they miss and if that monitor gets filled up, I'm just gonna send them home because I'm done. Not everybody can do it. Not everybody understands the concept. Not everybody understands the goal behind it. Not everybody understands even how to fucking do it in the first place or even what that fucking means. Oh, God. Okay. You realize what you signed up for? I don't know. You have known him the longest. I know, and I know where this is headed. Bang in the boat, bang the boat, bang. Hey! Yeah? Check her pants, check her pants, man. Get your shit off my couch. What is this? Hold on. Fucking captain coming through. What's this? Trash. Trash. What the fuck? Trash. 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 Charlie. Trash. Charlie. What is all this shit? I don't understand if you're supposed to hold cameras how you fucking create so much trash. So. David, coming to the town? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Make sure you wear your life jacket. Well, a little choppy out there, Dale. You never know what could happen. You might lose you. Going down. Fuck. Yeah, I need to get a little bit of uh, gas. Good. Is this diesel down here? Is this diesel or is that diesel? Okay. And uh, we were hoping to run up to a store and just grab some essentials if we could. Can we do that? Uh, if you're not going to let us park here for fi five minutes and get food, mm -hmm. then I'm not going to get gas. We can't go get essentials. Do you guys have masks and gloves with you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can't leave the boat unattended on the field. Okay. So one, one has to stay with the boat? <clears throat> no, you just can't leave the boat here. You can't leave the boat here. Yeah. Can you, can you tell me which one it is? The next dock on the other side. Just this one right here? No. The next dock over. over. Next pier over. Thank you. No. You guys have to get back on the boat. Yeah. Oh, we, have to let the, we have to let you off over there. Oh. We need to go 50 feet that way. I'm sorry, we're just trying to go get a couple essentials. My bad. I just want frozen fruit, dude. I'm not gonna make a smoothie. <laughs> I know, it's like, oh, you wanna live on your boat? Well, fuck you. <laughs> Pat, you want me to stay with you or should I go into town? I go into town, protect them. Okay. Right, I'm gonna go get groceries, so.
What do you think about that lady? Think she's miserable or what? Just need something to bitch about? Just need something to do? You're all miserable right now. Yeah, but she's got a job. She at least shouldn't be miserable. A pleasure to have Patrick in the show. Mm -hmm. He certainly has the making, making. of an actor. <laughs> Great. I'd love to hear about his progress, so please keep in touch. You should try to see, we should contact her. Oh, honey, she's probably dead. This is 20 years ago. I know, she, you never know. She could be old as could... fuck. Oh, no. She died. Yeah. She was my director, and I've never seen this letter. And this That's was written. That's so in, cool, babe. This was written in the year 2000, February 28th, 2000. That is awesome. When most people think about Patty Mayo, they think about the bounty hunter. Oh, I'm gonna kick your fucking door. And initially, when I first met him, that's why I thought he was just gonna be this like outlandish, like all the time, like that. And then I met him. He's completely different. Like I'll never forget, like the second day on the boat. A bee flew in the water, and he's like, we got to save the bee. They're important, and all bugs matter. And I'm like, who, who, who are you? You even have them back then. What? Your lashes. Oh, yeah, look how big they were as look a baby. Look how long they are, and they're still like that today. I think if you want to get to know me, you got to read between the lines. <laughs> <laughs> Change your leg. <laughs> All right. Then we're off. Yeah, with this wind, I don't know if we're going to see how things are. It could be a little rocky getting into... Getting into Nia? Nia Bay, yeah. Yeah. We'll the wind seems a little strong today. Yeah, it's strong. Yeah. She's a blowing good. As that salty sea dog said. The winds were born here, son. The winds were born in the Straits of Juan de Fuca. He said it so seriously, too. You're just like, okay. Thanks, pal. <laughs> winds born here. Got it. It's a wind vagina. It might be a little rocky. It might be fine, but we need to we need to get going. We're, our goal is to get to Nia Bay, so that way we can go out to the ocean and make it to Portland and get over the bar at a certain time because there has to be a weather window. So we're, look how protected we are right now and look like what it's like. So two things I think might happen. Yeah. We might actually not get to Nia Bay. Yeah. yeah. We may have to actually just turn around and go anchor where we were. Yeah. Which is why I'm trying to get us out here quick because I See feel what? like we're going to hit some... Hey, guys, if you're up top, you need a life jacket. Yeah. We're going to be hitting some shit. You need to let Charlie know. He needs to come down like ASAP if he doesn't have one. Because we're gonna hit, hey, we're gonna hit some, we're gonna hit some heavy shit. Charlie, come down. <laughs> Charlie! 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 Hey guys, when you get something on the fridge, make sure you put the fork back in the fridge because if you don't and we go through rough seas, the fridge is, gonna, is just gonna fly open and stuff's gonna go everywhere. The weather, me. if my prediction is right, we'll probably be seeing Almost the biggest stuff we've seen, but I think, I think we'll be man. I think we're going to be manageable. Okay. Worst case, you just turn around. Yeah. We're right by our protection. We're just going to get. We might, we might fucking. I don't know. Lose some pasta. No, I'm the pasta. No. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Plenty of spots to anchor in here, boys. This depth is this depth is beautiful. So, oh look, a little fucking dock over here and shit. Yeah, we'll just tuck in. We are hoping to make it to Nia Bay so that way we can stage to get ready to go out and try to make it to Portland. And about a couple hours into it, Pat realizes this is not good weather. We need to deviate. We need to pull into Port Angeles and stay there for the night. Can you can you Google Port Angeles Anchorage? Yeah. That is a typical fan photo. Don't give me a fucking typical, <laughs> fan. Give me a typical fan photo. That's so stupid. Sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Like cool that you're up here. Holy crap. Yeah, we follow you like crazy. We're trying to Thank get you. Appreciate it. So I was at the computer and I was editing and I felt Pat's present behind me. So I started talking to him and I turned around and he's naked. So yeah, that was the moment that I saw the dick. Yeah. Yeah. We had looked at the weather and the weather was supposed to be good. We were supposed to have a great opportunity to leave and then the weather drastically changed on the charts. And it was just all red, all yellow. And I think at that point, we're just like, we can't, we can't go anywhere. What's on your mind, Pat? Nothing. Nothing we can do. This is what we do. Welcome to being on a boat. Sometimes we just sit here for three days, four days. Mm How -hmm. you been lately? Mm hmm Do you really don't think we could salvage anything out of the content that we've got? Why, why did you feel like it's marginal? Because I've been shooting content for five years, and I know what's good content and what's marginal content. And you feel like everything we've got is marginal? Marginal, yeah. Somewhere. Right. And, and the chance of this making it, I think, is extremely rare. I think that was our lowest point. By that time, we were pretty much ready to go home. What we have now, this is garbage. There is nothing hook about this. We have zero hooks at all. If, you can, if anybody can give me one hook that they think someone's going to go, oh, on, that sh on the show, then please, you know, nothing interesting is, has happened or is going to happen that we know of, you know? You wait to see if something happens. But nothing's happening. I would say my threshold for success is pretty high. Everyone at this point is just down the dumps. We're in a moorage and we have no gas. So we realize we're going to have to go fill up the boat and then head back out. He's coming down. Just need a little bit of diesel. All right. yeah. why, why are you leaving it on like that? Oh, I was about to tell you. Okay. You turn it back off? Oh, okay, yeah, hear that loud buzzing sound? Not no, I don't audio. hear it. Tell it's me not... more, no shit, Sherlock. But I forgot you're 25. You know everything. No, I don't. But if you keep saying that, I'm going to punch you in your face. Well, you said no shit, Sherlock. Because you do that. You, you just said no shit, Sherlock. It's it, on. Like, yeah. I was going to go back and turn him off, but I was come back here to tell you that. So you just figured we all wanted to hear the annoying sound on audio for the last, next yes, 30 seconds? So why am I the no shit Sherlock? That'd be exactly. you. Exactly. That would be you. Honey. That would be you, honey. Sweetheart. 
Huh? Because I have to drive the boat. Sherlock. He's got a great heart, um, uh, but he's also got a very, uh, very tough exterior as well. And so, you know, I don't think it shows through as much. I, he's very good at um, not showing any type of vulnerability a lot of the time. You know, that, that's not something that comes easy to him. have people's best interests and love at heart. Mm. I never mean anything bad. It just comes off fucking bad. Mm. My whole life, if my intention is good or funny or whatever it is, the intention is here. But somehow the message is like that. It just goes over there somewhere. I don't fucking know why. A big point of conflict resolution is literally just listening to what they're saying and not denying it, not giving them like, no, I wasn't doing that. It's saying, well, all right, I, I see where you're coming from. However, do you want to talk? What? Would you like to talk? That's just what we're just trying to do, honey. It's not just one instant is what I'm trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. I understand. Like, like, okay, I, I understand. I understand what I'm saying. I apologize. I understand. Like, I, I understand it upsets you. And I try to tie mm -hmm. line. I just go do it. Or if I don't do something quick enough, it's like I'm not. I don't. It's like you. Your 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 temper a lot shorter with me than what it is other people. It's what I'm trying to tell you, and that's what frustrates me. Okay, I'm like, sorry. Have patience with me. Okay, I'll have more patience with you. I'm sorry you feel that way. I apologize. I know it upsets you. And so I'll be more Instead cognizant of, of it, and I'll try to fix it. You want to give me a hug? Yeah. And okay. then 25, don't be like, it's a typical 25-year-old. Okay. I'm sorry. I won't say that. It is very disrespectful okay. for all this shit I've been through in my life. That's what irritates me. Okay. I, I won't say that. Love you. Next day, we don't know what happened, but the weather changed. Somebody sent us a gift, and we were able to go again. Yeah, so we finally made it across the Straits of Juan de Fuca into Nia Bay. Everyone was very happy to kind of anchor out and chill out. Uh, we had to go get some gas, because at this point, we're running low, and to get all the way down to Portland, um, we know we have to fill up all the way because we're gonna need all the gas and we wanted to pump out before we left Nia Bay and go into town and get some essential items that we needed for the boat. What we're doing here is getting, getting near gas, man. You can just get fifty feet up in that diesel, you know what I'm talking about? Do the red stuff, you know, just go, go, go fast, man. You know, go 10 outside, all down there to Los Angeles, maybe 800 gallons, I don't know, 400 gallons, 300 gallons, something like that. Holy shit, look at all those fucking seals. Hey guys. Justin, I don't think they like you. Hi, Mr. Sea Lion. 
Did you see how they looked at us when we were walking to town? Oh yeah. Really? Oh fuck yeah. One oh. got like revved up at us. I wasn't even paying attention. How's it going? Good, what's going on? Pump boat's not working? Pump boat's not working? Oh, where do you... Do we have no, any other ones at the marina? Okay. Where do you pump out? So you have to go to Port Angeles. Oh, really? Yeah. Fuck. Okay. I guess we'll just go to the ocean. <laughs> Dump three miles out there. Okay. Well, that sucks. Cool. All right. Are you the uh, skipper of the vessel? Yeah. Do you have ID? Yeah, why? Uh, the port's closed, so we're just going to take the log of people that enter. Sorry, you have to escort out of here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just pump, oh, pumping out and getting fuel. The fuel docks are open, obviously, and pump outs are open. Yeah. But we're not staying in your marina. No. Motherfucker scratched the shit out of my floor at the tripod. <laughs> oh, and by the way, for stealing my Cokes, I tossed your bunk. Okay. It's not okay. You got my bunk tossed, too. <laughs> I love the sea. I haven't been back in Italy for a while, and... Uh, and I come from an island, I come from Sicily, so being at sea, it's, it's really bringing me back home a little bit. And that's, that's good, that's fun. Thank you, thank you. Jess, did you see his bro? No. Let's go his bunk. Yeah. He's putting his mattress back on yeah, right now. Whole bunk. No, I like the attention. I think it's so cute what he's doing. I feel like he cares about me. Sal! This is the White Star. Hey, how you doing today, sir? Uh, yeah, we're just trying to keep tabs on the uh, vessel traffic on our bay here. We're just wondering uh, uh, where you guys are heading, where you guys are from, over. Pump out? Cause yes, fucking... sir. We attempted to pump out at Nia Bay. Turns out their pump outs are off. We just filled up on diesel. I think we're going to see some weather tomorrow. We should be able to uh, bail out early in the morning. But right now, we're going three yeah. nautical miles offshore to uh, dump the uh, brown stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do that, sir. Appreciate that. Yeah, stay safe out there and uh, have a safe transit back. Coast Guard out. Thank you, sir. White Star out. White Star out. At some point, I, I went to take a shit, right? And when I went to take a shit, I noticed that my shit was not going away. So I went to Pat and I said, Pat, something happened with my shit. And he said, what did you do? And I said, I didn't do shit. I just did some shit and it's not going away. So that's when I was tasked with the unclogging toilet mission. Don't do it, it's gonna okay, make So we need to remove some water. Okay, a cup. We need a cup. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw up from this, not from the fucking waves. <laughs> it's not always a great feeling to dive in your own shit. Or maybe it's a little poetic, like diving in your own shit, you know what I mean? Like owning your own shit. That's what I was doing. I was owning my own shit. At least if we get some water out and into the shower, we could then hit the after use and uh, and and maybe get it plunged out. Mm. Uh. Look, I just pretend it's it's not what it is. Yeah, it's just it's just water. No, it's fucking shitty water. <laughs> I was showering and then I hear all this, and I walk downstairs and Sal's elbow deep into the toilet, unclogging the macerator. Yeah. Well, who else is going to do it? He's going to Holy shit. <laughs> you get the bag nice and tight to your arm. Do we have an elastic or something that I can No, we'll just hold it. We'll just hold it. Oh, okay. We'll hold it there. We're in. All right. Going. What do you feel? I feel that my hand is too big. <laughs> get it in there. No, seriously. Get it in there. Get it in there. <laughs> Wait, okay, okay, wait, I'm touching something like plastic. Go. Something that is like plastic. Yeah, it should be like a valve. He unclogged it, 
and he got it working. So, go south. <laughs>
So are all the, the boats do here at this marina. Go, they, they, they go to, they drive all the way to Angeles? Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, okay. Yeah. They may deny us entry into that store. The uh, Dell went there today. Yeah. That's where you got paper towels and stuff. I don't, yeah, they said that, so that newspaper said that they are trying to close stores down to non-tribe members. Yeah. So you, can, you can't discriminate in America. They literally you can't said discriminate the against, a tri against the fucking color of the and nationality of somebody. Excuse me. Perfect. You want one, too? Just get one. I don't think we need more than that. Yeah, grab, if you see a thing of Coke, grab a thing of Coke. Where you guys from? Seattle. Seattle? Yeah. yeah. That's come by boat? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they, they got it locked down for sure. Well, if you guys are here, we can be here. No, no, we, we have it. We have the whole town locked Oh, uh, well, it's America, so you can go anywhere. If you're in America, you can go somewhere, I can go somewhere. We ain't arguing with you. We're telling you what we're doing. What's that? We ain't arguing with you. We're telling you what we're doing. Oh, yeah. No. It's good information because if other people come and see you, the cops are going to cut you off. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the cops this, came in. This, this is sovereign. You're still in the United States. No, it's still sovereign. I know, but it's the United States. You gotta be careful. Yeah. Yeah, they came and talked to us once. You too, brother. I mean, everyone's gotta eat, right? Sorry. Don't mean to be rude. I just don't put up with that sovereign nation bullshit. Let's beat it. Let's beat it. I can't believe they're calling the cops on me in America for going to the grocery store. That's why I love going anywhere with Pat. Because he don't put up with bullshit. And I love him back. He's so protective. The last two times I was arrested was because I was standing up for my rights. I got arrested on 9-11 once for flying a paraglider. In the best quote in the article, freedom is what it's all about. And just because some terrorist attacked our country 10 years prior does not mean that on that day, I shouldn't be able to do what I love, flying a freaking paraglider, because other people are scared. Guys, I cannot believe what just happened. I just had to go back into this stupid fucking town to get groceries, which is, by the way, in the United States of America. And I was told that I'm not supposed to be here because I'm not part of their sovereign nation. I don't see Americans asking sovereign citizens, where are you from? And I don't see them blocking the road going out, just the road coming in. They seem a little one-sided and hypocritical to me. And also, did you know that that same tribe has been exposed for illegal whaling? No, yeah, I fuck them. I'm not listening to their fucking laws. White Star 5150, this is the Coast Guard. If you could have the master come out on the back deck, we're gonna pull alongside, over. Copy that. To what do we owe the pleasure? I feel like we have business. I had assumed that they were just making sure we had all the proper equipment that we needed. Um, they moor up to the boat, and Pat gets a citation for entering the town during a lockdown. The, uh, the uh, captain of your vessel. I am. You are? Yes, sir. May I ask what it's for? It's, uh, we're going to be issuing a citation today. OK. What's the citation for, sir? For violation of the shelter and place order. I was, how am I not, what? How, we, went on shore. we went on shore to grab essentials. Right, and you're not supposed to be doing that, but not only that, but the people were causing, whoever was on shore was causing issues. It causing what? Causing issues on shore. A couple of people yelled at us because we weren't sovereign citizens and said, what are you doing here? You're not a sovereign citizen. And I said, well, this is still the United States of America. I, I understand you have a sovereign nation or whatever you have over here, but I still feel like I have the right to get groceries. And there was... A full grocery store, why am I getting a citation? I'm sheltering on my boat, sir. The tribe issued a shelter in place ordinance because of the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that no outsiders can come in the reservation to prevent possible infection. Don't you feel like there should be a, a, a warning before a citation? Why is a citation the first step? Were you the gentleman I spoke with earlier today when we tried to pump out? Yes. So you said that our pump outs were closed, so we made the yes. trip. We, we, made, we made the responsible journey offshore uh, where we were allowed to do it rather than dumping it in your bay because, of course, we respect, you know, general mariner laws here. Not, you said the pump downs were closed. You didn't say, please don't go into town. You didn't say anything like that. We were at the general store 
We grabbed a few things. We forgot a few things. We went back. This, and, and so now the only contact you have with me is to come up and issue a citation and you feel like that's appropriate, correct? So why is this the first thing? Because you don't like that I said I should be able to be here, I'm an American citizen, because I didn't like being told to get out of here. You're not a sovereign citizen, you're an American citizen. Well, so be it. I'm an American citizen, and I think that I should have the same rights as everybody in your sovereign nation. I was, I was kept my distance from people, and I didn't say anything to anybody in any negative fashion until they gave me shit, sorry for my language, for being an American citizen. I'm just letting you know how I feel about the situation. You probably should give somebody a warning or let them know what's going on. So how much is the ticket, sir? I'm going to pay your fine, sir. If you feel that, if you all feel this is appropriate, if you all seem like pretty smart individuals, I'm going to pay it. Is this okay? Or you want it in the front? Sure. And if I don't pay, you said there would be a judgment issued against me? Okay, but there wouldn't be a, a warrant, correct? That's all up to the court. Well, the tribal law can't enforce a warrant, as you know. All right, it's a civil infraction. Thank you, sir, for clarifying. All right, do you have any questions on that citation, sir? Not at this time. And stop using our Coast Guard to enforce your sovereign crap, please. Our citizens pay taxes for this boat. I don't know that you contribute to that whatsoever. I don't have to go inside my boat, sir, but thank you for the offer. Why don't you promptly fuck yourself? Thank you, sir. You too. You. Fuck those guys. Have a nice night in America, boys! Thank you for your service, Coast Guard! Fuck your sovereign nation. We woke up at 5 a.m. Everyone hit the decks and we said, let's go. Send it, boys. Morning, crew. <laughs> The weather looked pretty good this morning. Got the right separation, the right wind. We have wind that increases later in the day, but as the waves seriously decrease into the blue. Pat and I had talked about bringing this boat down to Portland since he purchased the boat. I was excited because this is a journey that Pat and I have been thinking about since December. I'm excited to anchor at Ori Force during the Ori Force event, and then oh, yeah. the fighter jets would fly over us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we thought that uh, we had a weather window, and uh, Pat knew that it was going to be a little bit rough. Uh, I think uh, the, the phrase was, uh, send it, and that's what we did. Yeah. I could ride all the way to L.A. like this right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be like two if days. we had radar, we could do it at night. We could work in ships. Yeah. And I pilot. Well, if we had, you know, a lot more gallons of gas, too. Well, oh, that's but, true. Yeah, we could definitely make it. So we made it about three quarter of the way down to the Columbia River that goes into Portland. And uh, there's a bar crossing there that's apparently the most dangerous bar crossing in North America. And um, and we kind of got we kind of got fucked. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the ship graveyard is what they call it. It's one of the most dangerous places to cross. Basically, over 2000 ships have sunk in there. Everybody was having a, a good time, and we were up here on the flybridge, and we were chilling, and it was great. And then as we approached the, the bar at the Columbia River, things got a little more hectic, and then progressively to holy shit. What's going on? As the tide 
comes in from the ocean, you also have the river draining into the ocean, and those two bodies of water colliding means uh, uh, bad news. This is something that I haven't experienced yet. Like, I've experienced some rough waves with him before on the way to Canada, but nothing to this extent. Coast Guard 5150, Coast Guard 5150, Coast Guard 5150. And then I think he came to the realization, we might need help. We're going to need some help because this is getting steadily worse. There's 25 knot winds. And these waves are getting like 10, 13 feet, maybe. Coast Guard, we are about six to 10 nautical miles outside the Columbia River. I have not entered the bar before. We hit unexpected weather. Our bar was consistently going under waves. We need an escort or we need help. Hold on. 5150. Oh, fuck. Oh, you don't want to cross the bar if it's, you know, more than 25 knots. You don't want to cross the bar when the, uh, the swells are 10, 15 feet. In the last three hours, was hell. No. I, last time I checked, it was. Okay. Guys, we are OK. Yeah. We are OK. okay. These are bad wind waves. Oh. Hold on. Justin, get my dad out of the window before you bump into the window. Yeah. The way the water comes in, right, we were getting hit at, at an intersection like this. So really the only safe point of passage that we could have gone is in between that intersection, which is a really narrow angle to begin with. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. What? Take the water in for my dump wall. Yeah. All right. Well, Coast Guard update. Uh, our dump wall is filling up. We're taking in water from our uh, captain's door on our pilot house. Over. I think everyone was massively relieved to see the Coast Guard show up. It was maybe like an hour and we see the Coast Guard coming in. Oh, it was the best moment, I think. I was just like, oh, it's like God himself had just like sit the boat down and I was just like, thank you. Thank you. Can we get on their ship? And basically they told Pat, hey, we're gonna get in front of you, we're gonna cut these waves for you, and you're gonna follow us across the bar. Coast Guard, I lost an engine. Coast Guard, I lost an engine. Yeah, uh, copy, understand. Turn around now. In the middle of that clusterfuck of waves and, and everything in the bar, we lost the starboard engine, completely died, which, you know, we've got two engines, so when one goes out, like, we're essentially turning in a circle, or you're using the rudder to try and fight the one engine that you've got going. You can't travel in a straight line anymore. Ah! Ah, if you just hear constant beeping on the boat, it's not good. And Pat goes, Coast Guard, Coast Guard, my starboard engine just went out. I think my heart sunk to my stomach. I could feel it. Turn it all the way off. And now turn it all the way back on to see if it breaks. If that engine would not have started back up, I honestly think we would have been saved by the Coast Guard. It's probably because I was slamming them full and back, full and back. Yeah, I'm sure it was. It probably got overheated. That was either an oil pressure or an oil temperature light. The Coast Guard says, all right, you have crossed the Columbia Bar. Is there any further assistance you need? And we're like, nope. We just want to anchor and collect our thoughts. We learned to keep a better eye on the weather. Um, and 
we learned that this boat can handle a lot more than we thought she could. It was very scary. It was horrific. I would never want to experience that again. I feel concerned about what I was going to tell my mom. She saw the trailer and she said, oh, that was rough to see. And I said, nah, just, just dramatization. You know, movies. <laughs> Charlie puking on the stairs and like it just, it all just added up to this, this clusterfuck. I, I've never been involved in something like that in my life. After seeing and going through what we went through, I think anybody first experience being on the boat going through that definitely throwing up 1000 percent the aftermath was something to see like our fenders are hanging out the boat all tangled up in a knot our couch had basically unbolted from the bow and almost went through our windshield so it's just all over the bow everything's just strolled everywhere on the boat i wouldn't have not been able to do it i know that deep down in my heart that i would not have been able to drive that boat through what he drove it through and that simply amazed me how he was able to keep me calm, keep the crew calm, and was like, we got this, guys. We're gonna make it through it. Pat and Pat would be shouting back, it's gonna be okay, and, and I picked up on it, and so I was shouting back, it's gonna be all right, we're fine, we're good, and just trying to reassure everyone. Meanwhile, Pat and I are exchanging glances like, holy fuck, we're, we're about to die out here. What you would describe as fear, I would describe as adrenaline and fun. What you would describe as dangerous and maybe we shouldn't do it, I would describe as a challenge that I have to do. The worst that's going to happen is you're going to die. And guess what? You're going to die anyways. My threshold for adrenaline continues to grow. I think that's the main thing that drives me. It's like, all right, great, when I, hit, when I do this, then what am I going to want to do? I never know what this thing is going to do. He definitely took care of us. He definitely made the right decisions when he had to. And I'm very impressed with, with the way that he handled the boat all the way up until the U.S. Coast Guard is coming to save us. I'm really happy that we gave Patty what he wanted. I'm really happy that we managed to shoot everything like he wanted. And I'm really happy that we got some nice, sweet-ass footage that we can really be proud of. I wanted to show people a little bit more of me behind the lens. You know, I think someone wants to see me as me. But like, what, how, what, is, what does Patty Mayo do? Where does he live? How does he live? Is he really an asshole? Coming up next, Jesus, uh, who, who knows? <laughs> I mean, he's basically already started a war with a Native American tribe and uh, nearly got us killed in the North Pacific. So um, I have no fucking idea. The whole plan was to yacht down from Seattle to Los Angeles. But due to the weather conditions, we had to settle here in Portland, Oregon. Sometimes he makes me lose my words. Like, is he, is he gonna do that? Like, what's gonna happen? Like, when we first got to this dock, Justin forgot, I guess something came off the tinder, and next thing I know, he's running down the dock and having to dive into the water to get his tinder. So, what's to come in the future? I don't know, but I'm super excited for it. We might head down to LA. We might head down to Ensenada. We might head to Florida and cross to Panama. I don't know. But all I know is sign me up. This first mate is ready. Wherever my captain takes me, I will follow. Yeah, well, well I'm glad it's over. <laughs> you thought the, the Columbia Bar was wild. How about this?